Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Purpose Vision Future Show. I'm Amanda Hill, and I'm coming to you from Canberra, Australia. Now, today I'd like to talk about examining your past. And you may remember from previous episodes that the three keys to discovering your life's purpose are examining your present, examining your past, and examining your passions and dreams. You might like to go back and look at the previous episodes I've done on examining your present and examining your passions and dreams because that will put this all in context. Why would you examine your past? Well, by examining your past, you can actually learn a lot about yourself. You can reflect on what worked in your life and what didn't. And you can look at similar things that you looked at when you examined, when you examined your present. If you look at your past through the eyes of a keen observer, you'll notice themes as you did when you examined your present. And these themes will include patterns of thought, reactions to various situations, likes, dislikes, and preferences. <clears throat> and if you examine these with a reflective and questioning mind, you'll start to see the why behind these things. And that why will point you towards your life's purpose and how you may want to live that out. Now, I've talked in previous episodes about how I lost my job and sold skincare and retrained as a speaker, trainer and coach. But I still didn't really know what my life's purpose was. And I was working with a coach. I thought my life's purpose was to be a career coach and to help people who had been laid off in the same way that I had. And so I was, wasn't, but I wasn't getting any clients. And so I decided to work with a, a beautiful coach who I've, uh, who I've mentioned before, Regina Green. And if, if you're in corporate and you, you are a woman and you're unhappy in corporate and you're thinking about perhaps getting out, she's the woman that you want to speak to. She's amazing. And so I was working with her and she said to me, look, being a career coach, you're putting yourself in a box. Take, take that box away. And I discovered after a few weeks of working with her that what I really wanted to do was help people discover their life's purpose. And so that, that was good. That was great. I sort of put that in the crock pot of my brain and let it stew there for a while. And, and then I just, then we were due to go on a cruise, mum and my mum and me, we, we travel a lot together. And one of our favorite things to do is cruising. And so we, the, we've just heard that the cruising season is opening on the 17th of March and 17th of March, April, sorry, 17th of April in Australia. So we're absolutely ecstatic about that. We can start going on cruises again. You guys in the US are so lucky having to cruise for the last year or being able to cruise for the last year. Anyway, as is usual, the first day on the cruise ship is usually pretty busy. We're running around, checking everything out and seeing what's where on the ship and just yeah, just checking everything out. And as usually happens after lunch, mum decided it was time for a nap. So I'm lying on my bed thinking about and pondering. And I, I thought, how can I discuss, how can I help other people discover their life's purpose if I don't know what mine is? And I knew that it had something to do with helping other people discover their life's purpose, but I knew that that wasn't kind of narrow enough. So I started, for some reason, I don't know why, but I started just thinking about thinking back over my life day by day from the present going right back to my childhood. And I won't take you chronologically through that because that will bore you silly and I can't remember ever, absolutely everything that came up. But what I would like to do, if you would indulge me, is to show you the themes that I discovered throughout my life and how those themes pointed me to what my life's purpose is. And so the first theme that I discovered was overcoming challenges. That's been a really big theme in my life. 
ever since birth. I was I was born. You may you may remember from previous episodes. I was born at just twenty six weeks. I was given uh, because I was so small and my lungs were underdeveloped. I was given my my twin sister and I were given too much oxygen at birth, and I was a fighter from day one. And Apparently the nurses, and whereas my, my poor sister, she, she lived for 10 hours and, and died, unfortunately. Um, I think all the, all the fight went into me. And apparently the, the nurses had to make little mittens and booties for me because I kept pulling the tubes out of my nose, which were providing me with milk and oxygen. And so I was, I was a fighter from day one. I was kicking and moving and pulling at things and whatever, even as a tiny baby. In fact, I was so small, dad could hold me stretched out on his hand. So, and if you want the measurements, I was one pound, nine ounces, and I was 10 inches long when I was born. And I was given too much oxygen at birth and my parents didn't realise until they got me home and I was, after three months in hospital, I was still only five pounds. So I was still very little and they took me to the paediatrician and who diagnosed me with retinopathy of prematurity, which means the oxygen caused my retinas to detach, causing total blindness. So challenges. I also faced challenges at school. When on my first day of school, I met my best friend, Ella. And hey, Ella, if you're watching. I met my, who was to be my best friend, Ella, and because they, back then they didn't give long canes to small children. Uh, now they give them to toddlers, but they, they didn't give me a cane at that stage. And so Ella was my confidant, she was my guide, and she was my best friend. And we were everywhere together. And then we, uh, when we went to high school, I, I was a bit scared of going to high school. And I thought, oh, every, everything will be okay because I'll have Ella. But then when I went to high school, uh, a week before we were, I was meant to start high school or middle school, as you would call it. Ella's parents rang and said, look, Ella's not going to the same high school as you. She's going to a different one because she's going to live in a, in a different state. And I was absolutely devastated. It, it, when I wrote about it in my book, this book, uh, Seeing by Vision, Not by Sight, when I, and you can get this at purposevisionfuture.com when I wrote about it in this in this book it made me cry just remembering about it I was so lonely and so scared and I had to learn how to get around the school using a cane and it was so hard and I didn't know how to make friends and it was just awful but I, I didn't let that conquer me I I realized that I, I didn't have any friends and I started to listen to them and I thought well what I need is something in common with these people. So what are they talking about? Standing outside maths class, what are they talking about? Oh, they're talking about music. Right. I'm going to become an authority on music. So Australia's uh, music show back then was called Countdown. And I used to listen to that every Sunday night. That was compulsory viewing. And within a few weeks, you could say any song in the eight, any 80s song, and I could tell you who wrote it, what it was called, and I could sing you the chorus. Um, unfortunately, though, that didn't help me make friends. Um, <laughs> and amongst a sea of hormonal, sea of teenage humanity, I, I, I still felt very lost, but that was okay. Um, didn't have anyone to talk to in the, in the lunch break, so I used to sit and read my textbooks, and that got me really good marks. And and so that, so I, I didn't let that challenge overcome me. But thankfully, um, when I went to uh, the senior school or college, as we call it, uh, years 11 and 12, I made some wonderful friends and am still friends with them today. So that story has a happy ending. Just briefly, challenges of overseas study. I wanted to become a physiotherapist and that. Uh, went over to England to study because that was the only place I could train and you can read about that in the book. I also had, came, when I came back to Australia, I studied commerce and law and I had various challenges uh, in that uh, I had to write 147 job applications before I got my first job, but, you know, that was, that was okay. And you can, you can read 
more about the challenges in my life in my book. <clears throat> so challenges was the first theme and how are we going for time? My timekeeping machine has turned itself off. Um, so while I'm fixing that, the second theme which came out in my life was public speaking. And, okay, still trying to figure out what the time is and it's not going to tell me. All right. Okay, yep. So the my, my second theme I discovered in my life was public speaking. And because I was blind, my parents talked to me a lot and read to me a lot from a very early age. And so I started speaking at, a, at an early age. And so I remember uh, my or my parents telling me this. I do very have a very vague memory. My <clears throat> my parents, I dad was in the army. I'm sorry. I vaguely remember when I was about three and my dad was in the army and I apparently would sit up at the bar and as bold as punch, I would say, oh, I'd like, I'd like a gin and tonic, please, to the barman in the, in the mess. And, of course, he would just give me Coke or whatever it was and I thought it was great, but, you know, I felt so grown up drinking my Coca-Cola with ice, thinking it was gin and tonic because that's what my daddy drank. And so I've always found speaking very, very easy. Uh, I remember I was on the school debating team and we, we won, we actually won a few debates. We, we did quite well. And I, I really enjoyed being on the debating team, except for one particular time when we'd finished the, um, finished the, the debate and the judge was giving his his. Uh, summing up and, and points and he said oh you know the, the speaker for the the affirmative which was me made, made the second speaker for the affirmative was gave a very very good very good talk very convincing it's just a shame that she gave it to the wall instead of the audience and gosh you, you'd think my my fellow debaters would have turned me around wouldn't you but you know then again they were high school students so you know who knows uh, and I remember, I'll never forget when I was at my friend's wedding, I was a bridesmaid and they were looking for someone to give a toast to the groom's parents. And they didn't have anyone to do that. And the best man's going, oh, I suppose I could do it. And I stepped forward and said, oh, look, I'll do it. What do I have to do? And he said, oh, I'll just, you know, thank the, the groomsmen for the toast to the bridesmaids and then ask everyone to be upstanding for the, the toast for the groom's parents and just say a couple of things in between. It's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Easy. So all the way through dinner, and I, I, I kept leaning over to the second groomsman and going, John and Shelley? John and Shelley, is that the names? Yes, he'd say. And I thought, right. And I was terrified I was going to forget their names. Anyway, John and Shelley, I kept saying, yes, he'd say. Through the speeches, I thought, right, okay, I have to talk about couple of points I have to talk about uh, thanking the, the Grimsman for the, his speech, talk about why I think Mark and Gail, or how long I've known Gail, why I think Mark and Gail would be good as a couple, and then propose the toast to the Grim's parents. So I had those three points in my mind. I stood up, I gave the speech, everyone clapped, the bride cried, and thanked me and I thought oh okay I'd obviously done a good job <laughs> so uh, that was that was easy and hello Mark and Gail if you're watching so uh, that was that was that so that that was that theme now before we go on to the third theme I think it's a good time to take a break so stay right there and I'll see you on the other side 80% of women will develop a pelvic health condition at some point in their lives there is relief there is hope. The Pelvic Floor Store, your resource for personal health. Hello and welcome back and thank you to our lovely sponsors who make this broadcast possible. Now, if you are enjoying this broadcast or other broadcasts on this, on this network, please do consider donating because your donation makes this broadcast and other broadcasts possible. And you can do that by going to wytv7.org. That's wytv7.org. 
So we were talking about examining your past before the break. And I had covered, I was starting to look at a number of themes which I had, which had, had come up uh, during my examination of my past. We'd looked at challenges and we had, uh, yeah, we'd looked at, at challenges and we'd also looked at the other theme, which escapes me right now. Um, huh. Anyway, <laughs> never mind. Um, yes, so we had, oh, speaking, that's right, challenges and speaking. Sorry. Um, please feel free to cut that bit out. So we had been looking at the themes that I'd been examining in my past and, and we'd covered challenges, overcoming challenges and public speaking. They were two big themes. <clears throat> and the third big theme that came up in my life was encouraging others. Now, I remember when I was about five, mum said to me, what do you want to do when you grow up, darling? And I said, oh, I want to be a nurse because my mum had been a nurse and I knew that nurses helped people. They helped people, they encouraged them, they made them feel better. And she said, why do you want to be a nurse? And I said, well, they put bandages on people and they make them feel better. She said, oh, yes, that's, that's true, darling, but nurses do lots of other things, don't they? She, she didn't want to crush my spirit. She didn't want to go, of course, you couldn't be a nurse, you're blind. So instead of doing that, she said, oh, look, nurses do lots of other things, don't they, darling? They, they, uh, they make beds and you don't like making beds, do you? I went, oh, no, definitely don't like making beds. And between you and me, at the age of 52, I still don't like making beds. And uh, they also empty bed pants, continued mum. Oh, what are bed pants, I said. So she told me and I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, I definitely don't want to empty bed pants. No, that's, that's awful. And no more was said on the subject. When I was at school, I got to do work experience, which is where you go off and you spend a week working with a business or, a, or working with a person to see what it's like. And I did a number of different work experiences, but the ones I enjoyed most were physiotherapy and and occupational therapy because that was really practical it was helping people it was encouraging them not just helping them but encouraging them come on you can do one more and you know just lift that up just a little bit higher yep perfect that's wonderful you know it had a lot of sort of encouragement in it and so I told you how I um, um, went off and studied physio and how that that didn't work out. You can read about it more in, in my book, this book. All these challenges and others and lots of different stories in this book uh, are in here, as well as the whole chapter on discovering your past and examining your past. I mean, and there's exercises in there to help you do that. So don't go, don't worry of, in sort of think, oh, my gosh, I don't know where to start. It's all in there and it will, will guide you through that process of examining your present, your past and your passions and dreams. Um, anyway, so helping people, encouraging people. So people have always said, told me that I'm courageous and that, that I'm, I'm really inspirational to them. Oh my gosh, you're so amazing. You can do this, you can do that and you can catch buses and you can, you know, talk to people and I just think, oh, you know, I'm, not, I'm nothing special. I'm just living my life like anyone else. You know, I went to uni. I, I, you know, did various things, got a job. You know, that's what everyone does, isn't it? So I'd always kind of struggled with that. And it used to make me angry when people would go, oh, you're so amazing. But then I had the privilege of hearing Mick Wojcik speak. And if ever you are ever feeling down, just Google him and watch him on YouTube and his name is spelt V-U-J-I-C-I-C. -I -C. It's a Serbian name. So go watch him on YouTube. He's just amazing. He's got no arms and no legs and he travels the world or used to as a speaker and he's written multiple books and he does a whole heap of stuff around bullying. He's just amazing. So Nick Wojcik, I got to, to watch him speak and 
he was talking about all these different things and I thought oh gosh I'd love to speak to him afterwards unfortunately I didn't get to because he had to leave very quickly um but I thought oh what would I say to him if I spoke to him and I'd say oh Nick you're so amazing and then I chuckled to myself and thought I hate it when people say that to me I hate it and then I thought but that's what I really think and it was a bit of a revelation moment for me because I thought well if people think I'm amazing that's their business that's not my problem if they think I'm amazing that's great that's good I can I can use that to their advantage and I can encourage them and inspire them and help them and and this is a good thing so now I, I don't hate that anymore when people say that I just say thank you so the um and and so encouraging people comes naturally to me I've realized I remember when I was on holidays once in the U.S. we were actually about to go to Disney World was it Disney World yes I think it was no it wasn't Disney World it was Anyway, we, we were going to go to one of those one of those theme parks there. And so we had to catch a, a shuttle to a central point. And <clears throat> um, we were we were sitting there. And we when we arrived, we realized that all the lights were off and we couldn't understand where all the lights were off and all the lights were off across the road too. And I sat there for you know 20 minutes waiting for this shuttle to take us to where we were going and I wish I could remember what it was anyway because it was good I remember we had a wonderful day uh, and so we were sitting there waiting spent 20 minutes sitting there waiting for the, the shuttle to come and get us and this poor woman on reception people were coming they, they'd been a power failure there'd been a car accident someone had run into a power pole and this poor woman she was sitting there while person after person guest after guest came down, tore strips off her and checked out. I haven't got any hot water. I can't, you know, haven't been, I've ordered breakfast and it hasn't come. Blah, 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 blah. These, oh, this poor woman. And she never, her tone never changed. Oh, look, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry, madam. There's been a power failure. There's really nothing to do. Yes, of course you can check out. Yes, we'll give you your money. We'll refund the money for your stay. And she was the, she was so patient and so kind and she never raised her voice and I thought oh my gosh that woman needs a hug but I, I really don't know her well enough to give her a hug so I said to mum can you take me over to the counter just as the shuttle was pulling up and I went over and I said to her you know what you are doing such an amazing job you are doing such a good job I there's no way that I could be as kind and as patient as you you are doing a wonderful job keep up the good work and I turned away and mum said she that just just completely lit up her face and I, I just wanted to put a bit of positivity and kindness into her life so they're the three things I discovered in my life encouraging people speaking and overcoming challenges and so by that stage mum had finished her nap and she couldn't understand why I'm sitting on the edge of my bed, bolt upright, so excited, looking like I'm about to burst because I discovered all these, all, these, all these wonderful things and they were all starting to fit together like puzzle pieces. I could speak to people about overcoming challenges and encourage them. And my life's purpose was to inspire and encourage people and I was to live that out through speaking. So how good was that? That was, I, I'm so fortunate that that happened for me over an afternoon. And I, I'm, it's, it wasn't quite, well, it, that bit was the easy bit. The rest of it was the hard bit, sort of refining that. I, I first knew that my life's purpose was to encourage others. And I knew it had something to do with speaking, but I hadn't really worked out what was I going to speak about. Was I going to speak about life's purpose? Was I going to speak about um, blindness, life as a blind person? What you know, and it, it took another couple of years to kind of refine what I was going to speak about. And now I have a a keynote which has five points in it about how to overcome uncertainty and increase resilience 
by building courage. So that's it's it's all sort of refined from this great big sort of broad thing down to a nice narrow pointy thing that can go forward and do what it needs to do. So take courage. It 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 may not we've we've got this we've got this commercial for shampoo and it says it's it's a, supposed to be a conditioning shampoo and conditioner it says it may not happen overnight, but it will happen. And that is it's what it's like to discover your life's purpose. It will take some time. And on the last page of my book or the, the in the last chapter, I say, um, it, you know, it, it will definitely take some time, but the every minute you put into it would be worth it. And, and you will keep, you'll discover your life's purpose and you'll keep refining and refining and refining until you get to, you absolutely know that you know that you know that that's what you need to do and that's how you're going to do it. So, yeah, thank you for coming with me on a journey into my past. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it helpful that I illustrated the themes that I discovered and how they fit together. And, and you will be able to do that if you do the exercises and, and spend a lot of time thinking and examining and so that ends what I had to say today. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Purpose Vision Future Show. I would also, um, apart from uh, purchasing my book, I'd also love to invite invite you to follow me on socials. And you know, I've got I've got my socials there: Instagram or, or Facebook and LinkedIn. And I'm going to ask a lovely producer Libby to put my Instagram up there because that's getting some some love at the moment and it's, it's being revived and so is my YouTube channel. So yeah, please do follow me on the social of your choice and I will be there for you. But before I finish, I will leave you with my customary piece of encouragement. If you're facing a challenge, which seems a little bit too big, perhaps even a bit overwhelming, dig down deep inside, grab out that courage that I know is inside you because it's inside all of us. Grab hold of that courage, pull it out, and you'll be just fine. Thank you.